Today I am quilting this beauty and I will be walking through the process on how I figure things out. First up, I always start with thread choices. I have selected three choices, a green, gold, and peach color. I first thought this peach would be a contender, but after laying it against the quilt, I quickly said, nope, not for me. Now, this golden color would look really nice, so I am going to undo the thread and lay it against some fabrics just so I can get a better idea. Now, I will keep this color off to the side because it is not too bad. Now the third color I have is this green color called Celery, which after putting it against the fabrics, I am loving this one even more. Now this color will also blend more throughout the fabrics, and since I want to use this quilt as like a practice for my custom free motion quilting, I would like to hide as many errors that could happen while I quilt. So this quilt is mostly in green tones throughout the end. So this is the color I will be choosing, which once again is Glide in Celery. Now, the golden color would also be very nice, especially if you really want the quilting to show throughout, but I'm not that confident just yet. So we're gonna go with the green. First, I am going to be using a purple air and water soluble marker from Dritz. You can also use chalk pencils or chalk markers if you prefer, but be sure to test whatever you plan on marking your quilt with on the side before you start drawing, just in case the marker or whatever tool you are going to be using to mark your quilt doesn't do exactly what it says it will do. <laughs> now let's go ahead and talk about the quilting. First I look at the pattern and this is a simple log cabin style quilt. So now I'm going to start looking at the fabrics. I do see some umbrellas, flowers, raindrops, which I automatically think springtime, flowers blooming, April showers, which is also what this collection is called, which is April showers by Bonnie and Camille from forever ago. I apologize, Bonnie and Camille. Now, these fabrics are also very bright and cheery, so cute quilting would also go great. Now, since the piecing on this quilt is pretty good, I want to go ahead and quilt each strip with a different style of quilting. So let's start with the square first. I think a nice large flower would look great. Maybe even one starting in the corner and then maybe making like a swirl in the middle and then bounce out and make petals, similar to quilting a feather. Then if I do want to make it more dense, I can just go back and echo around the petal edges to just give it more detail if I want to. Here I am going to show you the flower on the lighter print, so hopefully you can see it better. And since I do like it so far, I am just going to go ahead and move on to the next portion of the quilt block. Since I do like the piecing, I am going to go ahead and stitch in the ditch and then create a border echo that is a quarter inch away on both sides. Now we have an area in which you can fill in whatever you would like to fill. I am actually going to do some loops that are similar to a ribbon candy shape. Now so far so good, and the next section I do want to repeat the same quarter inch echo on the border to frame it. Now here is where I decided that I would actually prefer those loops similar to the ribbon candy in the last border since it has a nice density to it. Then in the center one that we just did, I will still keep the quarter inch echo but instead maybe quilt a line in the center. Now that I have completely made a visual mess, I'm just gonna go ahead and move over to a new block and redraw everything again, just to make sure I like it before I quilt it out. Now i rather go back to the drawing board here than after I've already made quilting stitches because using the seam ripper to go ahead and take the quilting stitches out is not fun, especially when I even don't like the quilting I've done. So I rather try and come up with ideas to figure out if I do like this or not. Now, if you don't like actually drawing on the quilt, that's fine too. You can get like a clear plexiglass 
type of material in whatever size you would like and you can use like a dry erase marker and draw on it but I don't have anything like that now and since this is my personal quilt I am just going to draw on it myself because I know these markers will come out with water or at least time with the air. After I have finished drawing it, I did end up really loving the look of it, so I'm going to go ahead and start quilting it out. Now I've already quilted some blocks out, so let's go ahead and get started. Now since I want to create an echo that is technically a quarter inch away from the edge, the edge of the quilt could be difficult for others, so I will try and do a quarter inch basting stitch away from the edge first. Then I will make my way across the bottom of the block, stitching in the ditch. And now when I'm making my way back, I am ready to create that quarter inch outline. So I'm going to go in about a quarter inch away from the edge of the block. Then once I hit the left side of the quilt, I am going to be using my basting stitch to then quilt a quarter inch away. That way when I do bind this quilt, my binding should go up against the basting stitch line and I'll still have that quarter inch echo on the edge blocks of the quilt. Now I will travel on the top by stitching in the ditch and create a quarter inch echo on the other side of this green section. Once I have hit the edge, I am just going to travel down and then I'll start creating those loops in the style of like ribbon candy. Also, you will see a light purple line at a 45 degree angle. This is just for reference for me to do a tighter ribbon candy to the point. So then that way I can turn and do my loop ribbon candy all the way up vertically. Once I have finished this section, I will then start quilting in the ditch around the next log cabin strip and then I will once again do the quarter inch echo. followed by a middle line in the center of the block. And lastly, another quarter inch echo on the other side. Now, once that section is now complete, I will stitch in the ditch around the square until I've hit the center point in which I will now start my flower. So I will go ahead and do a swirl and then I'll bounce back out of it and then start creating my petals which are similar to like a feather design. Now that is one block down. Now the rest of the quilting I need to do. So I will just travel by stitch in the ditch until I've hit the section where I would like to start and then just basically repeat everything. Now I know my thread color in celery is blending pretty good with this fabric collection, but do keep watching and you'll be able to see the quilting throughout the quilt on the different colored pieces. 
for instance, this red is really starting to stand out. So you can really see the loop happening throughout this red border area.
and that's pretty much it. I do hope you've enjoyed where I've walked you through my thought process on how I quilted this, but until then, I will see you all next time.